quick Googling. Figure out how to make this work. So in the same way that you can make an S3 bucket by instantiating some bucket class, you can make a Lambda function by instantiating a function class. I'm just looking at this example where someone had, um, someone's trying to do a, a Rust based Lambda. He did three years ago. So let's let's take a look at maybe the docs. Here we go. Here's the docs for for Bloomy. Uh, for function. So they have they have some examples we'll look at in a second. Uh, and then <laughs> yeah, this is a good warning. If you are if you're using a lambda on a VPC. It can take quite a long time to uh, clean things up if you need to delete things. Uh, not that that really matters because I'm currently doing things with local stack, so that shouldn't have that issue. Not that I think I even, I'm not gonna, gonna be worried about VPCs and stuff right now. Um, so, Function resource, uh -huh. yeah, new function. Nope. Uh, let's see, how do we pass? Uh, so it's this code parameter, P, e, uh, that then you pass an asset to. So, okay. Pass to the function's deployment package within the local file system. Exactly one of file name, image URI, or S3 bucket must be specified. Okay. So I want to look at this, this asset archive thing. Uh, let's see, assets. How do I, how do I, it's not clickable. How do I, how do I look at the definition of this? The word asset does not appear. Concepts, assets, and assets and archives. Um, let me understand how to take the files referenced by the asset or asset or archive and package them for use by the resource. So a file asset, a string asset, and a remote asset. archive objects, file archive, remote archive, asset archive. Interesting. So in the example here, using asset archive and let's keep bootstrap. Asset archive. Okay. How do I see the actual documentation? If I click this, it takes me nowhere. Let's try this a different way. So, um, I don't care about that ID. Let's uh, let's imagine create a lambda. Yeah, I'm not worried about 
roll or any of that stuff quite yet. Uh, there, there are run times. So if we want to use uh, Rust, there is not a Rust runtime. I'm pretty sure there's not. Double check something really quick. I think we use the AL2, so the Amazon Linux 2 base is the thing we can do here. Just double check that what I'm saying is correct. Uh, or AL 2023 is, is the more current one. Including support for Go, Rust third party, custom runtime, see OS runtimes in AWS Lambda. All right, so we just ship a uh, executable binary. And I think we can do that. And I think this is how we're going to avoid having a situation where we need to support Docker images. Yeah. Now, this isn't going to solve all of our problems. And ultimately, if I do want to use local stack, I'm going to have to pay for it for things like batch. But for the purposes of testing things out, this, this will be fine. Uh, so I'm after the is it AL Amazon. There's a runtime. Oh, cool. I can see things there. That's that's better. Okay. Cool. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. roll is missing. Okay. Let's make a roll. Const uh, lambda roll. Um, and it's not going to have any permissions. So I'm just um, making a container that holds permissions. That's what a role is. And uh, this is a role that will be assumable by the Lambda service. That makes that happy. Um, code wise. What do we actually need to do here to provide the binary? I think we need to provide a bootstrap. It's not going to be a string asset though. File asset. Make a folder. I call it um, start uh, step function lambda. Sure. Look at this example. I think this is actually a pretty good example, although not really. Um, how do I want to do this? I want to Taylor required. It's not. I got rid of that. Yeah, let's do this. So we're going to go into I'm going to start a new terminal. And we're going to go into start um cargo new how does this work again <laughs> uh it's gonna be cargo new something something dot uh it's, this is a binary although that is a default uh, ba, 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 ba. yeah so can we just do that Lambda. Uh, what I know it already exists. Uh, that is okay. Fine. Delete it. Delete it. 
recreate it here. Hooray. All right. So how do we how do we make a, a lambda function uh, with Rust? <laughs> I've never done this. So this stream is all about things I've never done this specific thing before. Um, which is uh, fun stuff. So um, probably good resources here. Building Lambda functions with Rust. We are going to want the AWS SDK for Rust, specifically for this Lambda, because we need to call um, other AWS services. Basic Lambda function. So here's, a, here's an example from AWS Labs. We have a cargo.toml. Um, so let's compare the default one with what we uh, want. Version, edition, dependencies. This is not the right path for the Lambda runtime. Uh, let's see. So here's an example that we'll want to, to take. Um, is this runtime um, on Earth? Oh, I see. So this is an extension to, to make it easier to just run cargo to new function name. That's cool. Um, what if I have a crate and I just want to... I don't need all this stuff because we're going to manage things with Pulumi. Um, so presumably in crates.io this thing exists. And I bet if I look in here Do you exist? the right thing yeah it's the same readme cool Yoink. uh not in there it's seeding into uh start step function lambda cargo add there we go lambda runtime um and then get some good examples here right so Below shows a simple function that receives an event with a first name field and returns a message to the caller. So we don't need all that. Um, so we need to at least have this stuff. Service fun. Funky. Service fun. Funk. Okay, so that this is the actual thing that's invoked with the event and returns the, the result. We wrap it and then we call lambda runtime run and await and then okay. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna borrow this. So we're just gonna have a very simple like hello world. We also need Tokyo. Um, back to that in a second let's get this going uh we just want a hello world yeah there you go perfect and we need 30 json and 
Let's, let's do it this way. Let's use the command line. Tokyo. Yep. And starting JSON. Perfect. All right. And then we don't actually do anything with event. Let's uh let's print the event. There you go. Cool. So this could work. Uh, cargo build. Have an executable. Now I think in practice we'll have to think about. Well, in practice, what what I would really want to do for this is have a build process that builds a, a Docker image and then that Docker image gets shipped. And then that is what our Lumi infrastructure code uses to deploy the actual uh, runtimes for things. Uh, but for now, just for like getting a thing that works, uh, this is fine. Yeah, so here is our actual executable. And I copy relative path, great. And then what I'm gonna do is paste that. And maybe this works. Oh. So I guess the the, the the thing to do is just let me local up and see what it wants to do with this and if it works I don't know um, okay we'll look at the preview in a second so let me explain kind of what what this is and where we're going with this. So ultimately what I want to do is I want to connect the bucket to the Lambda function so that every time a new object is added to the bucket. Uh, okay, so we have some errors of what we need to fix. Uh, so every time an object is added to the bucket, so when I upload a file is another way of saying that, this Lambda function is run. So my Rust code will get run. Uh, and and the Rust code in turn needs to do something else. Um, we're going to define a step function with Pulumi here as well. And the Lambda function will need permissions to uh, run the step function. And it will need to know what the name of the step function is. So there's some things we need to hook up and create here as well. But let's, you know, sort out building these pieces before we add more stuff onto it, right? So it says, Handler and runtime must be set when package type is zip. So the package type, um, I guess, is a zip. It's an archive created from in memory collection of named assets or other archives. Um, but we don't actually need the handler because it doesn't matter. We're providing this bootstrap uh, in the archive, and I think that should work. I could be wrong. Um, and we are setting the runtime. So I think that's just the generic error um, saying the things you need if package type is zip. So let's try it again. And just like building these building blocks and making sure they are deployable before trying to hook things together this means we're, uh, you know, cutting down on what errors we're gonna get, and so can focus on um, what problems may, we might run into here. Okay, so we have a preview. We're removing the bucket name output. Right, I removed that export, but it's not removing the bucket, right? But we don't see that here. We're seeing two things being created. The, the I am role for the Lambda and then the function. Um, so this looks good. So let's go ahead and deploy, deploy, oh, deploy this to uh, local stack. Um, 
So the upside of this is that, hey, this isn't costing me any money to provision these things. Not that they would like, it doesn't cost anything to just have a function that exists or I am role or any of that stuff. It's only when like the function is run. And in fact, really you'd have to, you have to run it a lot for it to be, uh, to even cost you anything because there's like a, a threshold amount, right? A free tier. Um, but still you can imagine if I could spun up like a bunch of resources and add things automatically triggering, uh, locally. So it'll all be running locally. Uh, the downside of course, is if I want to look at things, um, like if I'm familiar with using the AWS console to look at resources, well, I guess I don't really have that. Do I with local stack? Uh, maybe I should look at the docs. Oh, it looks like there is some kind of UI. Um, oh, this is probably why I want to like sign in and link my local local stack to their cloud is to be able to have this UI. So I, I'm guessing what the thing you want to do here. Yeah, app.localstack.cloud. So I could potentially do that. Let me let me go sign up now. Sure. What does that look like? We need to see what it shows after I finish logging in. Before I show it on stream. Alright, so. Dates. They succeeded. Provide more information. Three, two, whatever. Or sign up. Go to dashboard. Cool. Um. Complete your billing details. Uh, I won't be doing that right now. Okay. So yeah, I think I can show this. This is what this looks like. I think the idea is that I would be able to take the auth token, put it in the local environments, and then I'd be able to see uh, things here. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm not doing that now. We're, we're gonna keep on keeping on. So that succeeded, it took 19 seconds. Okay, so we have a Lambda. Um, we could potentially invoke the Lambda with AWS local. Uh, lambda something something, help. because I didn't give the neat name of the resource. There is actually like, I think there's probably a property here called name. Name is deprecated. not found on AWS Lambda US West 2 function my function interesting hmm. why didn't that work
utility stacks here. Resources. Function. Oh, it's literally, so, okay. So the name of the thing and the name of the resource in Pulumi are different, right? When I called it my function, this is the name that, that's why name and the properties was deprecated. Um, that, that name is the name that's attached to the function in AWS, but the name of the resource in Pulumi is this thing that was returned. That's good to know. Function not found. Um, or or I'm still wrong. <laughs> Hold on. No, no, it is. It is no. It is the other way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, th this is the Pulumi URN, not the AWS URN. The ID and the name are these, which is the thing I originally had, right? Fo six. So, oh, US East one. So I must have, um, let's see, export AWS region. Let's have um, uh, US West two as my region in my environment somewhere um, because that's closer to me. All right, function at bounds, Lambda, They're different environment variable. Yeah, lol, lol indeed. Uh, let's see, AWS local. Help. Okay, uh, I have that tab somewhere, right? Here we go. AWS local. Uh, endpoint local stack host use SSL. How do I tell it the region to use? Hmm. Now it used US East 1. That's nice. Um, like if we take the ARN, qualified ARN, qualified ARN. I wonder if I can pass that as the function name. It would be really nice if I could just look at help, right? Well, AWS lamped. It's not, it's just very unhelpful. Can I pass an arn as the function name? It's usually a thing that works. Value, failed to satisfy. Okay, it doesn't like. Arn AWS, Lambda, stuff. Region function Huh. What? Um 
Oh, right. This. <laughs> ah! It did it. Oh. Very helpfully, it created a file called dash. Not like outputs STD out. Okay. That's. Shouldn't be what it should do, in my opinion, but it did it. Hello from Russ. Status code 200. Terrific. Ship it. <laughs> All right. Um, and. Uh, I'm not going to try to make the CLI command to like dig out the cloud watch logs, but presumably if we were to do that, we would see this print. Um, well, what next? Let's hook up the Lambda 2S3. So, um, how do we do that? Well, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go down here. Actually, let me change the order here. Uh, so we'll have all the Lambda creation stuff and then we'll make the bucket and then, uh, run the lambda when uh, objects are created in the bucket. Exactly. So is this a method that exists? Let's find out. Yes. Creates a new sub subscription to events fired from this bucket to the handler provided along with options to control the behavior of the subscription. The handler will be called whenever a matching S3 object is created. Okay. Um, so the first argument is the name of the subscription, apparently. The handler is an S3 bucket event handler. So let's, let's dig into this a little bit. So this is a type that is a Lambda event handler, which is a Lambda function or a callback. Okay, so we can just pass the Lambda function to it, apparently, it's cool. Um, and then options is stuff that I don't think I care about. So I think maybe that does that. Um, so maybe I do need to find a way to uh, AWS local. Cloud watch. Hey, death row. How's it going? How's your Sunday been going? I'm trying to figure out how to follow logs from cloud watch, uh, from the command line, which I've never bothered doing, uh, just chilling. Nice. Nice. Uh, I always just go into the AWS console or the logs are being shipped somewhere else, uh, but Oh, is there a separate CloudWatch logs command? Uh, or maybe it's just called logs. Ba, 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 ba. Scrolling. It is logs. All right. We got okay. log group, log stream. Probably want to list something. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> log event start. Ooh, start live tail. That that has potential. Uh, we probably need to know what's a tail. Yeah, log group identifiers. So let's try this again. How do we find the log group? Um, so there should be a log group that's created by the um, by the lambda when it gets invoked. Describe log groups as some potential. I would have expected like a list something. 
but I didn't see that. List anomalies, list log anomaly detectors, list tags and resources. Put, start, stop. Okay, let me try this command. Hey, we got a log group uh, for our function, which is really nice. That means we should be able to just take this. Uh, it needs a log group identifiers. All right, so now if I were to I can split this terminal, right? Nope. Okay, so let's, uh, no, I wanna keep this terminal. So let's add, oh, I can split it here. There we go. All right, cool. Um, oh, could not connect to endpoint URL streaming localhost. Hmm. Hmm. Is it a bug? <laughs> I think that's a bug. This is going to be the thing that's going to tell me. Nope. Okay. No one has ever written anything about this. Hmm. Excuse me. So no one has bothered trying to <laughs> tail logs with AWS. I'm using AWS local, right? Yeah. Good. Great. Actually, really inconvenient. <laughs> hmm. log stream maybe I can just like dump what's in there describe blog groups describe log streams describe filter log events get get delivery get log events maybe we'll work what's a log stream name like group name. Ah. So at this point, do I want to just try to hook this up to the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, local stack cloud? Let's see what that looks like. So how do I, so I have an auth token. I'm gonna move this off stream for a second. Loading, copy, Oops. copy. Uh, auth token says environment variable in dev environment. Okay, well, I don't want to do that. How do I do that in a way that doesn't put my uh, auth token in the environment? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this, but uh, let me move this off screen. Y'all are not allowed to have my, my auth token. <laughs> uh, copying that again. Just gonna delete, delete 
that turned off. Anyone know how to remove the last two lines oh, like from the history file? Yeah. Not history. Isn't it not history? Not bash history. Uh, ba -ba bash history. Bash history. terminal open a new terminal and it's gone all right cool uh who knows what who knows what else is gone but let's let's try this so um uh control r local stack stop there we go okay i lost my path Now those resources that I created before are gone, but that's fine because we can easily recreate them. So we'll restart local stack. This Interesting, it's still pulling pro. I don't know why it's doing that. I guess it assumes if I've set the, the auth token, I must want pro. Maybe the implication is, is that all the web UI stuff is actually only available if you're paying for it. Although they have not said that anywhere. is a clue here right uh please start local stack pro yeah so maybe this is doomed i was really hoping i could have a convenient way of seeing the uh logs well it did start uh so if we do This should recreate our things and also add our uh, our event subscriber to invoke our lambda. What I would really like is a way to um, get access to the logs. Here's preview uh, setup of the changes. So this uh, uses the existing bucket, creates a bucket event subscription. Uh, it adds a permission automatically so that that works and a bucket notification. So it creates these three resources that facilitate this, uh, this integration from S3 into, into Lambda. So let's deploy that. Um, 
<clears throat> Excuse me. I wonder if there is an easier way with um, local stack to get access to the logs uh, that are going to CloudWatch. CloudWatch. But this sort of thing is a thing that for me is a, is a downside to doing something like this versus just like deploying everything into AWS is that if it, if it was actually in, in AWS, I know how to find those things. Um, and then the downside from a, like a, if you weren't familiar, this isn't really helping you get familiar with how to deal with what, what it actually would look like in a real environment going in there and diagnosing it. Getting started, quick start. message local stack community version would you like to upgrade so can i see Ooh, default. okay okay so this is working nice excellent all right cloudwatch logs go uh all right nothing's happened yet that's fine uh oh we're creating very slowly <laughs> permission Okay, well, while that's going, I'm just gonna keep on keeping on, right? So the point of the la this Lambda function here is actually going to be start a step function. It's gonna orchestrate multiple jobs. That's the, the idea for kind of the, 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 what I'm thinking of is the kind of architecture I want to build with this. Uh, so let's make a step function, a step function. function to um, be where the orchestra um, various processing tasks. All right, so, all right, state machine is a thing that exists. some arguments. It isn't like these arguments though because roll arn is missing. That makes sense. So we're just gonna have an initial task that's a pass task.
All right, update failed. Uh, and initially, the state machine doesn't need any permissions either. It just needs a role that it is, um, I can assume. There we go. So one thing that's very different, or somewhat different, that stands out to me, coming from using the AWS Cloud Development Kit, is a lot of these default role things are provided when you like, create a resource. It's like, if you don't say, oh, use this specific role, it will create a default role. And so the, um, if you don't need anything special, this becomes much more compact. And it also allows you to do things like, instead of creating a role, you can do things like, hey, I wanna give the state machine a uh, grant, uh, you know, an execution, things like that, which apparently doesn't exist here. All right, so um, function not found. Oh, right. So between <laughs> between when I used Balloon before and now, I tore down the local stack. So all those resources are gone. So Pulumi is sitting here thinking, oh, it needs to update things. And that things that are were previously deployed are still there, but no, it's all gone. So how do I fix that? How do I just reset the um, state of things? So, uh, let's see. Stack, big, destroy, refresh the resources in a stack. Okay, so refresh might be the thing I'm after. Does that, does that check to see what is in the account versus what it thinks is there. Okay, so it's realized that, oh, some of these things don't exist. No resources will be modified, just your stack state. So yeah, go ahead and do that. So once that does that, then I can actually deploy um, those changes that I was trying to deploy before, and it's gonna recreate all the things that are messed up. Um, and then and the state machine. And what I would like to do with the state machine is I would like to have the Lambda have permission to invoke it. Let's see, assume role policy, and then I want to uh, add an inline policy. That's not the right thing. I hope that it's been really good so far in terms of most things that's suggested for us. It's just wrong here. What are the actual keys? Policy. It doesn't seem to like that. something this is the problem type parameters of funk and funk are incompatible hey sneaky spudsworth how's it going how's your sunday been treating you all right so i need to find some docs from lumi on creating this policy statement and a role. How do I do that? AWS guides. I am uh, policy documents. Uh, I could separately create a policy. Uh, so here's a role, assume role, role policy, uh, role policy attachment. There we go. Some more in-depth 
documentation. So if I want to create a role, tags, separately create this, line policies on the role. So it's just doing like JSON stringify on, on that. with that what, what did I run, run oh I see it it's got a it's got a name and then a policy oh yeah okay I see so instead of doing bloomy output we're doing JSON stringify it's good, good with that seems like it okay so this should give the um the lambda function uh, Sneaky Spirit Zord says, hello, hello, your keyboard is interesting. Do you like it for gaming and working? Um, it's, it's taking quite a while to get used to. And I've also been kind of bad in terms of really focusing on the, like the, the home row keyboard fundamentals and, and that. Um, and of course also going from this keyboard to my laptop, um, which is QWERTY and it's just a normal normal keyboard um but i like it and i think you know it's uh it's not bad i think i i could be even better at this if i would have put in more focus practice on it which i've been kind of not doing <laughs> but uh, i'm satisfied with it and i think there's a lot of potential here if i were to dedicate some time for like more custom layers and layouts but you know, but yeah, I do use this for all my all my gaming. Uh, I think the the worst part is that um, for some games, it's really hard to figure out a, um, how to rebind things in a, in a convenient way. It's like a lot of things. So I don't have WSD. I have WARS. So I can just rebind that, and it's the same. The BASD layout uh, for some things, but um, some games there's just so many keys and it, they don't like rebinding certain things. And I can use layers for that, but then it becomes a problem of which key does which again. And I would need to like um, print out something, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, so it's. It, it can be a little awkward sometimes, but yeah, I'm, I'm mostly satisfied with this, um, this keyboard. It's very nice, uh, very comfortable to use. Um, I've never really had like issues with like Carpal Tunnel or RSI or anything like that over the years, and it's been a lot of years of being at a computer. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with this as a keyboard. Um, and despite it being like, ooh, we got fancy, um, you know, elevation and all that stuff. It all can packed away and has a little carry case. So I actually brought it with me on a business trip at one point. Yeah, yeah. So this is the uh, ZSA. I just press no. <laughs> ZSA Moonlander. Um, and then the 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 bottom um, elevating thingies are separate. Um, that you can add on. They have a built-in thing for, for tenting, where you can like put the leg down like that, but uh, that's kind of replaced with uh, the use of the, um, uh, the the metal things that mounts on it. I forget what they're called. All right, so um, there, we refreshed the environment. So we deleted the stuff that was not not actually there. And now if I do Pulumi local up, should deploy the stuff we've defined in index.ts to uh, to our local stack. So this should let the uh, Lambda be able to invoke the step function. Of course, the Lambda is not written right now to invoke the step function, so it's not gonna do anything, but it will have the permission to do that. Assuming this all works, there we go. So it's gonna uh, do these things. It's going to create 
the bucket again because it didn't exist. Uh, but it's time for a break. So after the break, back to this. BRB. Export. Uh, and we added some loading stories. Uh, this, this was also something that didn't need to be changed. <laughs> 